Today, lesson 4C, transformation sequences. We're kind of just today putting together all of these different transformations uh, that we've been talking about. And then uh, you're going to be given some pictures of some form of transformation. And we're going to see if we can figure out how we could make that transformation by either one step or in some of them two steps. So when we do these, we have to remember all the things that we've talked about, translations, rotations, and reflections. Today we take a deeper look into all of them. We've talked about what they look like, and in some respects, these four problems right here are where we uh, lead today. Uh, so when tra And remember, when we're translating, reflecting, or rotating, we end up with congruent shapes. And what that means is the corresponding uh, side lengths are the same, they're congruent, and the corresponding angles are also congruent in measure. All right, so uh, this is a picture where we have lots of different things here. We have our pre-image PQSR, and we have a translation from that. We have a rotation uh, across are about the origin with regards to the pre-image and a reflection. So I'm going to leave this picture up here so that you can fill in the table in your notes and then we'll go through all of those. So what you're supposed to do in the table is I've given you some sort of property or description and you have to figure out which transformation or transformations, some of them have more than one transformation. And uh, when you're finished with that, I'm going to have you compare with your shoulder partner and then we'll go through um, all of those things in the table. So I'm going to give you about uh, maybe a minute and a half to two minutes to fill in the table. And once again, if you get stuck, look up here at this picture, and it may help direct you on uh, some of those descriptions or properties. All right, so everything, uh, you could have used this table to sort of figure out the majority of these. So let's uh, fill in the table, or that graph, not the table. <coughs> a flip of course, is a reflection. Most of us knew that. A slide is a translation. A turn, of course, is a rotation. No issues so far. Pre-image and image have the same orientation. Well, what that is, is uh, that refers to translations and rotations. Both of those, whenever you do that transformation, you have the same orientation. So the question is, well, what in the world does that mean? Well, a couple of things you can add off to the side of your table. Uh, reflections, they reverse the orientation. The, the orientation does not stay the same. And so you might be thinking, well, what does that mean? Well, take a look at this picture right here. I have a turtle, and I reflected it. The turtle on the right, if we say that that was the pre-image, it's looking to the right. When I reflected it, which direction is the turtle looking? It's looking the other direction. So that's what we mean by reverse orientation. The one on the left is looking left. When I reflected it, it's looking at the opposite direction. It's looking the opposite direction. So that means it's reversing the orientation. When you translate a shape, it doesn't reverse the orientation, and neither does a rotation. It's still looking the same way. And this reverse orientation is of importance in the study of chemical compounds, and um, I believe you guys do some of that um, in science. Let's go through the rest of this table here. Uh, needs a center and an angle of rotation. Of course, that's a rotation. Needs distance and direction. That's a translation. If you think about a coordinate rule for a translation, that's what we mean. Move to the left three and down five, for example. Needs a line of reflection. That's a reflection. Slopes of corresponding segments may change. That's reflection and rotation. In a translation, the slopes stay the same. Uh, corresponding segments in both pre-image and image are the same length. That's all of them. Parallel line segments in the pre-image, if they're parallel in the pre-image, they remain parallel in the image. That's all of them. And the last one, angle measure of corresponding angles of pre-image and image are the same. That is all of them. So I'm going to stop 
for a little bit to let everybody get anything fixed that they may have uh, done incorrectly. All right, let's continue on here. Uh, number two, you have that picture in your notes. What I need you to do is I need you to reflect that triangle ABC over the y-axis and label it correctly, A prime, B prime, C prime. And then I want you to take that reflection, A prime, B prime, C prime, and reflect that over the x-axis and label that A double prime, B double prime, and C double prime. And then we're going to try and figure out what one transformation could we have used to get that same exact thing as the double reflection that we just did. All right, so when we reflect triangle ABC over the y-axis, it looks like this. And then when we reflect that triangle over the x-axis, it looks like this. The question was, what one transformation is the same as this double reflection? That, of course, is a, either a 180-degree rotation clockwise or counterclockwise about the origin. And that's kind of, this problem kind of sums up what we're doing today. Okay? All right, everybody do number three, all three parts, and then we'll compare with our shoulder partner. <coughs> number three, we were supposed to take triangle DEF, reflect it over the line X equals 1, and, of course, the line X equals 1 is right here. That's the line of reflection, and that's why that triangle looks like that. And, of course, we're supposed to label a D prime, E prime, F prime, and then we take that and reflect it over the y-axis, which would look like that. And that's D double prime, E double prime, F double prime. Uh, what one transformation is the same as this double reflection? That's a translation two units basically to the left from the original pre-image. And that, as a coordinate rule, is X comma Y turns into X minus 2 uh, comma y. All right, here is what I want you to do. Um, we have number four, five, six, seven, and eight. You should kind of get the idea of what we're supposed to do here. Uh, you can either work on them independently and then compare with your shoulder partner, or you can work on them with your shoulder partner. But I'm going to give you about six or seven minutes to finish up the rest of these, and then we will quickly uh, go through all of them. So you have about five or six minutes to get those finished. Number four, uh, we have the quadrilateral QUAD. We're supposed to reflect that over the x-axis and label it. It would look like this. And then translate that uh, to create a new quadrilateral. We're supposed to move it nine to the right and don't move up or down. And so it would look like this. Number five, we have two separate questions here. We have triangle one and triangle two. Part A says which two transformations in succession would carry triangle one onto triangle two? And there's probably more than one way uh, of doing this sort of thing. But one way is a reflection uh, over the y-axis. So in other words, if we reflect this over the y-axis, it's over here now. And then if we reflect that new shape over the x-axis, uh, it would then turn into triangle 2. Any questions about part A? The next question is, which one transformation would carry triangle 1 onto triangle 2? And that would be a 180-degree rotation about the origin. Any questions about part B? <coughs> okay, let's take a look at number 6. Uh, basically, same idea, just different picture. We have triangle one and triangle two, which two transformations in succession would carry triangle one onto triangle two. And uh, once again, there's probably more than one way of doing this. I came up with a translation down one unit, followed by a translation up of five units, or another way, maybe a reflection in the line uh, y equals four, followed by another reflection of the line y equals 6. So there's more than one way of doing these. And then part B, which one transformation would carry triangle 1 onto triangle 2? Well, that would be a straight translation for units up. Any questions about number 6? All right, number 7. Describe a transformation or a sequence of transformations. So either one or more than one that could carry or would carry triangle 1 onto triangle 2. 
once again, definitely more than one way of doing this, but I came up with a translation, three units up, followed by a reflection across the x-axis, um, which turns into a basically a coordinate rule of negative x comma y plus 3. Any questions about number 7? All right, and number 8, same idea. Uh, I came up with a reflection across the line y equals 2 followed by a translation uh, to the right 7 units. Could you do that in one transformation? Yeah. Yeah, uh, one rotation would get that. And I think that's part of the point of some of these problems, that you could get some of these in one transformation by just doing a rotation as opposed to a reflection or two and then a translation. All right, we are finished for today.